Now, you know, youngin, nephew, that's home team. Yeah. You got him on that one. <laughs> love you, nephew. Yeah. I love you to death. He got you on that one. Nephew. Kentucky. And, and let me just tell you something. You know how you know when an OG kid a young nigga on the record? Anytime they say the OG killed that, you know he got you on the record. <laughs> because the young niggas be Die in the flame, old nigga. Why are you put him on here? Yeah. That shit, man, nigga, sound like 99, man. Uh, he you know fucked what? the record up. Before they we... be dying to barbecue an older nigga. So yeah. when you, all the young niggas like, oh, no. He, Jeezy, fuck that up. <laughs> That's when you know an older nigga got your younger yeah. nigga. Shout out to G, man. Shout out to him. He went crazy Shout on that record. He go he crazy on that. He anything. go crazy on anything. But the young niggas got to understand this. Y'all set yourself up sometime because y'all do the record, then send it to the OG, and they going to anchor that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. And they gonna, the anchor going to be vicious. This is why the boy don't be no 16. Mm -hmm. They ear it all the way out. Now, he bought the barbecue sauce yeah, it was, out. It, you know, so you got to. All gotta, the seasonings. Youngest dead do they? An older nigga going to sit back and say, okay. They going <laughs> to listen to it a couple times. They going to go in the booth, and they just going to flame it all the way out. Mm -hmm. Y'all give them Y'all give it to them You know what I mean But well, you're now tuned into Me 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 Million dollars worth of game man Yes sir Now listen man There's it, it, a snowfall going on We got yeah. a snowman on here uh, Yeah It's going down Who we got I mean we got You know Young We got young on here Big snow oh, oh, Big snow now B-I-G oh, okay. It's a no oh, It went from young see. Yeah It went to It went from young You know Young Jeezy Jeezy Big, big snow, Mister Seventeen see, that, Five. See, that's who the fuck you know. Who, who you know? Seventeen Five. I know. Seventeen Five. I know Lil J from Hawkinsville, <laughs> nigga. Oh, you hear okay, me? okay. Motherfucker yeah. was running okay. them streets with motherfucking okay. mailman and gold mouth. Yeah, you hear sir. me? Okay, yes, okay. Nigga, nigga, got left left school in ninth grade. Went to motherfucking from trap king to the rap king. Six, okay. Sixth grade. Oh damn, sixth grade. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nigga ain't even make it to high school. Okay. And yes, went from sir. motherfucking trap king to the rap king. To you know, now they tell me you motherfucking real estate king. Yeah, yeah, a lot of lot, lot of game, a lot of Atlanta. Yeah, half of Atlanta, baby. Damn, damn, no, no cap. LLC shouted. Who, 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 who put who put who put you on game? I was with my team. My, um, one of my great, you know, confidants and friend uh, and business partner, Solo, uh, is what we call him. Turned me on to which ended up being one of my closest friends, uh, my realtor. And he just gave me the game. Like he, we just went and bought all this land um, and buildings in the beginning, and I kind of fell back from it because I was trip, I was touring, I was, you know, doing what I do. And I got back, and he like, yo, come sit down and talk to me. And uh, he broke out, you know, the business, and he's like, yeah, you know, this building that you bought for such and such is worth this now, and this land that you bought for that is worth this now. And I'm looking, I'm like, damn, like we didn't do anything. He was like, "That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what real estate is." Yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you. You know what I'm saying? And, and from that from that day forward, I was stuck. Every big check I ever got, you know, I bought property. Uh -huh. Every time I had a birthday, I bought property. I don't buy chains, watches, cars, none of that. Mm -hmm. I buy property because I mean, at the end safe of the day, to say you had enough of them. Now. Right. <laughs> 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 they got forty four necklaces. I don't buy chains, yeah. cars. Nigga, but, you got the, forty cars. <laughs> but but the the real shit is, it was like. When, when I saw the game, because I always wanted to walk in a building like that. You know, you're around people, they tell you what they own. I own you know, this street, I own mm -hmm. this block. I can say that now. You know what I'm saying? With confidence, but that was my goal. I think a lot of people don't understand, like, you know, music was my talent. Not first off, but it was my talent, but business is my passion. Right. I always wanted to be a so business get some paper. man. You know what right. I'm saying? I wanted to walk, I wanted to run a company. I wanted to walk in the room and people like, yo, his look at his portfolio. Like, he does all these different things. So, that's that's what that was about. When I got in the game, I just really wanted to give it to everybody else because it was sweet. I'm right. like, why are we sell? Why are we flipping bricks when we can be doing this shit? Like, right. it's, it's, it's easy, right. you know. And, and and if you really think about it, you know, you ask some of my people you might know, like the Lakes, the DJ Drums, mm -hmm. and all. I gave them yeah. all the game, right. all the connects, all the people because they're getting real money and they're doing real, real things. Money. But it's like they're gonna turn their artists on and the people they know. And it's like those weren't the only people, but for me, it's like. 
I can't buy all the property. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Mm-hmm. So let's do it together. I gotta share this shit with somebody. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So- this episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now, today, we gonna do a little something different. New Amsterdam Vodka is introducing Wild Card. You hear me? Look at that. Eight ounce can, the first canned beverage that New Amsterdam Vodka has ever distributed. It's right here, wild card, and it's made with real vodka. We're not playing no games, okay? There's not no artificial shit going on. No, this is made with real vodka, and they come in three flavors. Original hard lemonade, classic hard punch, and this right here, lemon hard tea. Yeah, look at it. Eight ounces. Look at it. Real vodka. Look at it. Wild card. When you out and about, wherever you at at your local liquor store or wherever they sell New Amsterdam vodka, make sure you pick you up some. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Try all three flavors. Give all three flavors a try. Figure out which one you like the best. This right here is the lemon hard tea. I think I'm about to crack this open and see what it's about. All right. I want to say something. I just want to say it's always... It's always, you know, uh, solid when when motherfuckers reconnect and they get shit right. I heard I heard you and Freddie Gibbs reconnected recently, yeah, yeah. and it was just love. And you know, a lot of times we um we 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 promote, you know, the goofy shit that goes on in hip hop, um, and we always encourage that shit. But a lot of times when things get straightened out, sometimes because you know, as you growing up in this game, uh, it be a lot. It be a lot because you got different people from different sides coming. People over here talking, your people talk. You know how this shit go. Money. And, and, you know, sometimes a conversation can straighten out a lot of shit. And I heard y'all had a good conversation, exchanged numbers, and it was just love. I was saying that, like, I had one, of the, homies, I had one of the homies tell me, um, you know, understanding is the best thing in the world. You know what I'm saying? He told me that at a young age. I really didn't understand what that meant until, like, you know, maybe about 10 years ago. And... What I learned about dealing with people in, 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 in business, you know what I'm saying, because it is business, you know what I'm saying, is we have to talk about expectations in and, and, yeah. and business and the understanding before we get into business. Because if you come around and you think you have expectations and that doesn't happen, you feel like you've been let down. That's one. Uh, two is, you know, and you and you guys probably know that well because I watch how you guys talk to uh, uh, the generation behind us is is communication. It's, it's a real thing. Right. It's a real communicate thing. Communicate well. You, your marriage ain't gonna be right. right. You communicate well. Your friendship ain't gonna be right. And I just think we're like with, with that. We was all learning how to communicate. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And now, you know, he's successful. I'm successful. We can communicate because mm-hmm. we don't need nothing from each other. Ain't no stress. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when I saw him and he saw me, it was just like. But at the same time, it was never really an issue. It was more that we could not communicate. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So so now, you know, it, it ain't, you know, we don't have to talk about what's wrong. We can talk about what's up with you, how you what's going on. Mm-hmm. I see you, you know what I mean? It ain't the tension of something ain't going your way or something's not going right, and you don't know how to communicate about it. Even for myself, you know what I'm saying? I had to learn that, not to react. Right. When I had it, when I went in on live, and I was talking about, you know, when, when Nas was like hip hop was dead, and I flipped my shit, and you know what I mean, and, yeah. and really acted out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I went, went, Nas called me. I was like, yo, what's up, Jesus? I was like, what's up, homie? You know, I'm ready to. He was like, yo, I can understand, you know, your frustration, but let me explain to you what I'm saying. Yeah. So that really humbled me. Yeah. So when I'm getting into something like that with. My man, mm-hmm. I'm humble now. Like I'm, I don't, I don't have to f- react to what he's doing. I'm just right. gonna sit back and be like, when he ready to talk, right. we'll chop it up. See, for me, I feel like a lot of times with growth, a lot of times the ego leave. Oh no, that's just you know the ego is your, ego is your worst enemy. You know that's what I mean? A motherfucker. When you're young and enemy. you and you coming in the games and you you know you trying to put your feet in the game, you know you poke your chest out of there. You think what them niggas said? What right? Fuck them niggas want to do what? Right. Hold on, that nigga said what about what? Now when you get old and you you right. you grow and you you get to experience things and you got real problems and you got real bills and you got and everybody bro. depend on you and yeah. 
you realize yeah. that nah, 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 I, I can't die out here. I can't go to jail. Oh, you don't like, want down there, like, right? Like, no, 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 no. Like, right. you kind of let the ego go because right. you you learn in life that a lot of that shit that you did and went through when you was younger, that shit really wasn't that deep. It was just all about a conversation, right? You know what I mean? And like one of the big things King Vaughn said, and I was glad we got to interview him when we did before he passed. You know, the week before he passed, he said. Gilly, you know Gilly with this street shit. A lot of shit don't even really be that deep. It's just that niggas don't know how to talk to each other. It's mm-hmm. communication, bro. Yeah. But also, too, also too. let me say this. Like, it ain't no, like, like where you guys at right now, you didn't read a handbook or yeah. a template. Like, right. you got to figure it out. Got to go, go through that shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. So a lot of this is, you know, we all got a vision. You know what I'm saying? We all got dreams. But in in the midst of that, things happen that we don't know how to deal with culturally and as men and as having egos and having to defend yourself and stand up for what you believe in. So there's turmoil there, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, when people sit back and they like, you wrong, he right, he wrong. You, I might be right, you might be wrong, or vice versa. That doesn't matter. As long as we can communicate about what it is, we can continue to do business. But if we can't find no communication, then we can't do business. Same thing with street shit. If we can't communicate about what the issue is, then, you know, at the end of the day, somebody's ego is going to do something that's going to make somebody else hurt. Somebody's going to lose their son, their kid, or whatever, all based on not being able to sit down and, and talk. And you know what? Amplify that. When we grew up, you know, it was a different time and that, like, when a lot of shit happened to the youngins, I don't, I be trying to be more understanding because we didn't have the pressure of, Somebody disrespecting us in the world, seeing it with social media. Correct. So now they amplify, and you like, damn, this nigga think I'm a pussy. Right. The world seen it. Right. This nigga gotta die. So now it's a whole different joint, and it's a whole different to where as though you said, Nas called you. They call me. Like, 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 Neff, nah, what's going on? Like, you know, it ain't even. Let me explain to you. Right. Now, before somebody even can call you. Somebody then took it and then, and then right, somebody right. recorded it. You don't right. even know. Y'all had a, right. And now this shit, the world seen now, and they're like, nigga, got to die. We coming. But you're absolutely right, because you can't get beat up at the basketball court. No, no you get your ass whipped as a rat. Yeah, you got, you got, you know what I'm saying? I so, got my ass whipped plenty of times. It's like, damn, baby. But, but, but what I'm saying is, but that's, that's in the hood. So imagine yeah. for the world. Right? Yeah, the world. You know what I'm saying? But my, my thing is, I get all that, bro, but like, I ain't going to go to. Oh, no, I ain't doing no dumb shit. I'm grown. I wreck to go to war, to come back to go to war. Right. You feel what I'm saying? It's just like, I already yeah. served my time. Like It's time to get to the money, take care of my family, and live how I live. So my only advice, and I do not be trying to preach to nobody, yeah. bro, but it's just like, I'm not an OG, I ain't none of that. I'm the big homie. I'm the one to come back to the block with the shiny cars and all that and be like, yo, what y'all doing? Or y'all need to watch out for this and that and just give them a little game. But the reality of it is, when you get in these situations and you at a point where you can change the whole dynamic of your family, and it's on you, and you're not making wise decisions for the people that are around you and the people that rock with you. you you're in a position of leadership. You're going to bring the whole tank down. Yeah. But you will never, ever have this chance again. And a lot of people don't understand that, you know, 90% or well, 8, 10% of music and what we do is the art. The other 90%. Is staying alive and navigating yeah. the bullshit. Bad lawyers, bad team bad management, that bad business. The women. <laughs> the women, the 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 the, the Janky vices, promoters, the drugs, you know, death, prison. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I commend anybody that see it like that. Cause you everybody anybody can make a song, but are you gonna be able to survive? You know, I look at Dolph. Smart, bro, like yeah. you know. Uh, bankroll smart kids, bro. You know, smart little homies. Nipsey, Nipsey, yeah. genius, borderline, smart. brilliant. But it's just like that line of thinking that we exempt because we have an ego, or we feel like you know I don't made this far, nobody can't tell me nothing. That be the thing, bro. I mean, just imagine if homie could have communicated with Nipsey that he was a little jealous about what he had going on, and maybe Nips would have been like, "Yo, look, like, I'll do a record with whatever." I don't know. But whatever that would have did. Yeah, communication. Say, right. And having, and having the right, I believe it's important to be fucking with the right people in your immediate circle. Because mm. I believe everybody got to have people in line that can check them to where as though it's some type of uh, respect based off of the experience of life. Right. For instance, yeah, I did 20 years in prison, but 
Gil, my big cousin. Right. I'm my cousin. This is my big cousin. So right. it's going to be shit that he going to say or he might get it, a lot of it. He could check me off based on experience of life that right. I just don't know. Like, right. no, cuz. Right. Right. And I'm the one that say, when he do, right. I'm soaking the game up. Right. Damn, yeah, cuz. Right. Don't go that route, cuz. Right. Or damn, you slipping off. This, you need to tighten up here. Don't, no, you ain't. And you got to have them people around that see when you're not being who you are or, or you're not in, you know, executing or do whatever. You ain't on your ground or whatever you ain't on. Right. Or even if you out of pocket. Right. They got the authority to check you, and it ain't right. no ego based off your bank account. Right. Because what happened a lot of times, once you you know the game, once the motherfuckers start getting money, the big homie turned into the little homie out here right. a lot of times, and they right. be just letting the nigga do anything instead of if I was on the block, you'd smack me. Man, hey, what the fuck is you doing, now? Right. right. You send a nigga to the store, and now nigga got some rat money, and he telling he sending you to the store. Yo, right. give me some. Yeah. So so that's I mean, that's, that's important that's, to but, your team. But, but that's that's the thing though. It's just like you know, if leadership is based off. You know, whoever got the most money is in trouble, right? Because you know, I know billionaires that are unhappy and toxic and, and, and angry as shit. Control, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like me. I'm I'm a rock with people who got my best interests in mind. And even when I started my evolution, you know, like I came from the bottom of the bottom. I'm talking about you know, block hand to hand. You know what I'm saying? And went through the ranks. So there's not a there's not a page I didn't miss in this book. You know what I'm saying? The thing that I credit myself on that I did that a lot of people don't do is I ain't get a stain on my jersey. Yeah. And I didn't get locked up and caught up, which was a blessing. So I know that was yeah. the homie, not me. Mm-hmm. Right. You feel what I'm saying? So that was the real big homie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but when I but when when somebody asked me, I just try to give them the game because ain't none of us perfect. You know what I'm saying? We all had trauma, we all had to heal, we all had to figure things out. But it took me being around other people to understand that that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. it's okay to have a conversation about You know how we do. We going through stuff. You can't talk to nobody. So right. I already know if they going through shit, they on pills, lean, this, that, and other. Ain't nobody talk to. They can't trust nobody. They going to spiral out of control anyway because they ain't nobody around them to check them to tell them, hey, look, this might not be it. So my thing is, like, when you get in these positions, you able to take care of your family, you know what I'm saying? You got to do that. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you might not ever get this chance again. And then I'll be goddamn if I'm gonna do all this hustling, all this, all this street shit, get in a position to be have a, a real life, and then give it all back because I brought the street shit into the right shit. into the game. <laughs> you know right, what I'm it's yeah. like, right. <laughs> it's this ass backwards, but that, you know that's. And, and what's so fucked up about the ghetto is, you know, the ghetto raised some extraordinary motherfuckers. Mm. You know that's that skin be. Thick. I'm talking niggas be built for it tough. Mm. But the fucked up part about the ghetto is that, you know, it teach you really not to have feelings. Right. You know what I'm saying? Don't feel like, shit, man. You fall off the swing. Stop crying. Yep. Hey, what you, you know. crying yeah, for? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you feel what hey, I'm you saying? Know. So, real shit. so when you get real older shit. and you get in vulnerable situations, you don't even want to talk to a motherfucker because you never want to feel vulnerable. Right, you never want right. to feel weak. You never right. want to because since you was two years old, right. it's stop crying. Dun, 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 dun. Like right. you, you can't be emotional. You right. can't show emotions. You right. can't. You know what I mean? You try to show emotions in the hood, man, nigga, a bitch, man. Make you look weak. Like. The hood make fun of shit yeah, that we ain't supposed to be making fun yeah, of. Yeah. Look at this nigga going to college, you know, right, right, trying right. to be smart ass right, nigga. Right, like, wait, right. for, for what? So, yeah. so you can't even be vulnerable in the hood. So when you grow up like that and you have issues and you can't even talk to motherfuckers and you got to keep all that shit boggled in, yeah. right? that's that's fucked up. But then, but then, but then the flip side of that is those be the ones who make it because they have thick skin and they get all this power and this money. And got them issues. Right. Still got all them skeletons right. in the closet. Ain't, never, ain't nothing changed because you mad. Right. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Roman. Roman. Now, testosterone is an important part of a man's body and health. Important. But man's testosterone starts to, to deplete with age, which is why it's important to supply it early. Very Signs important. of low T can include a decline in energy and stamina. Yes. Weight gain, yes. hair loss, yes. and low sex drive. Yes. Roman's testosterone support supplements were designed by real doctors to help men maintain their body's natural testosterone production. Yes. The daily supplements include six nutrients to help support testosterone levels, bone health, and muscle development. Who wouldn't want to have proper levels of testosterone in their body? 
I know I do. Yes. We have a special offer for our listeners. Special. Use this link right here and get 20% off your first order. Just go to GetRoman.com slash game. game. That's GetRoman.com slash game. And now Roman T Support is also available nationwide at retail. Find Roman T Support and supplements in aisles at your local Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. Right. Right. I'm going to say this, though. I want to know this. Um, you made... Your catalog is filled with goosebump music, mm. and I didn't seen it from afar, and I didn't, I didn't seen it take place. Where to this day, it's, it's a lot of you know artists from yesterday, but to this day, you get on that stage and fuck and fuck the arena up. Rather you in Baltimore, rather you in Cleveland, rather you in New York, right. rather you in D.C., Charlotte. It's this excitement, even if you're looking at it through a phone. That people have, but you re, you reconnect them to a moment that's not here no more, right. and it's just like, what was the process of making that man? Just making that type yeah. of music because, you know, like when you listen to bodies of work, right. like and it's sad in this time and day and time, music don't last as long as it used to. Like right. the, the 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 longevity of music is like because so much coming out, the oversaturation of mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. People listen to a song a weekend and then they done. Right. They, uh, the album they right. drop it. Right. But this shit is still like, as soon as that shit come on, it's a rap. Right. But uh, 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 they they just good. You know what I mean? So, what was the process of making that type of music for a young cat that's listening? Mm. That's you know just that want to make songs, mm. like real songs, a body of work. If I'm honest, like I don't think a lot of people understand like the magnitude of what I was in and involved with. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, and, and, and what the consequences of that were gonna be or could be. And a lot of my first music, I made out of survival, mm-hmm. out of desperation, because I knew if I didn't figure this shit out, it was a wrap. You know what I'm saying? I was I was gonna be gone. Like it was only one or two things, like jail, uh, jail to death, and it was it it was serious because I can feel it happening around me. Like this mm-hmm. one getting indicted, that one getting indicted all these different things going on. So when I went in and did like Trapper Dying Streets is Watching, I already had in my mind that I was going to go to prison. Like I already had yeah. like understood, okay, this is what's going to be the end result. So let me just get in here and just like give this everything I got. Like everything. Like don't leave, like live full, die empty type shit. And um, it worked. And it wasn't until, you know, my first three albums, I was still going through survivor's remorse. You know what I'm saying? Break that I, down, though. Meaning that things were still happening around me mm-hmm. in real time up until the recession. So recession wound all the way back. I was drinking heavily, smoking, when sleeping. I, I probably didn't even, like, I wasn't even drinking water, bro. Like, I was just on a suicide mission because I was just like, I'm just going to do this until it's over. I'm going to ball top fall. Mm-hmm. And then when I got on, it felt too good to be true, so I was already waiting on it. You see what I'm saying? So now it's like I'm not happy. A lot of the things around me are toxic because everybody around me is clinging on to me for dear life, and I don't know what the hell to do. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Right. I'm trying to figure it out. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But also I know there's something bigger and better for me, but I never forget, like when people start getting indicted and things start happening, Def Jam need to pick up the phone. That's that's not that's not no cap. Only person called me was Jay Z. He said, You need to come talk to me? I was like, Hell yeah. So I went to New York. <laughs> and I went to his office and I sat in his office in Rock Nation and we sat and we had a real conversation. Yeah. And I just felt the sense of like comfort because I'm like, you know, he like, yo, you got it whatever it is, you know, I don't want to know. He's saying that. Like, you know, but this is how you got to go about it. And for me, it's just like, I wasn't the best version of myself until the recession because everything before that, I was deeply depressed, paranoid, you know what I'm saying? Didn't trust anybody around me. I had so much trauma and turmoil going on because I was that kid mm. that was told to be tough and these right. things. So I didn't even know how to talk to people, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I didn't even know how to 
connect. Like it was like a weird disconnect because even people that was my peers and I and I, I, I said it the other day. The realest thing about all that, and my biggest regret is not nourishing my relationships because I was friends with LeBron before anybody was friends with LeBron. You know, I was friends with this guy before, but I was such a street nigga. I just be in my like. In my Your own right, element. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I know I exactly stay what you're talking Let me about. keep my right. distance. I don't, don't want to be around like, um, nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm in that bag. And um, I just woke up one day, and I just remember it. When I was going in to record the recession, and I just woke up, and I was like, damn, I'm free. I got a double platinum record just came out. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, like, I'm going to be a superstar. And that was my mentality. And I, it was like, I was like 60 pounds overweight. I was like 260. I'm 5'8". Man. Yeah, all Crystal and Waffle House. Yeah, you know <laughs> so now I'm reading books, learn about health. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Get myself together. Get my get my mind right. I'm starting to heal. You feel what I'm saying? So now I'm starting to heal. I get down to like 190. You like I'm shit? It, it went from being gangsters in the front row of my shows to, to bras throwing pennies. I'm like, I'm never going yeah, back. Yeah. <laughs> like, so like, this is a thing now. So I'm like, I'm walking around. Ah, Jeez, I'm like, yo, yeah. they hit that nigga with a pair of yeah, panties. Right. <laughs> that nigga said, y'all keep the cocaine. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I've been, yo, and this is no cap. I've been at shows with cats that ran and threw a quarter bird on the stage. Yeah, I, I love, love it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just love. But what I'm saying is, when the set, when the set happened, not I, to cut I you off, though, you was paranoid and shit. You kicked that shit right oh off my the stage. What the fuck nigga, you doing, nigga? Yeah, yeah. no. You the police. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, and, 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 but no cap. So I went through. All those different things, but I could say up until the recession, I just wasn't happy because I had a bunch of people with me. And again, you trying to fulfill the leadership role. Everybody staying in my house, everybody wearing my clothes, like everything, driving my car, whatever. But it's just like they ain't even happy. So how can how can we all be happy if I'm coming downstairs and nobody's happy? Not even happy for you, because now it was just like you straight. I'm like, no, we straight. But now I got lawsuits, this, that, and the other. I got to pay for things, so it's costing me so much money, and I don't have an outlet. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have somebody that I can go tell. Who I don't too? really feel comfortable with what's mm -hmm. going on. I feel like I'm about to crash. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I had to just get out of my comfort zone and just start to communicate with other people, and then I just got this place where I was able to talk, like one of my best business partners, Solo, where I just tell him, like, yo, man, I'm, I want to drink wine. What's that about? Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah. I, my, my whole ploy was to get to him so I can talk to him. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. What kind of cigar is that? Is what we having a conversation. Yeah. I was like, you know what? Hit a conversation. I would love to do real estate. He's like, I know somebody you should talk to. Bring the guy in. We sit down. We talk about real estate. You know what I'm saying? I don't know shit about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He explained the things. I just give him the money. Right. Boom, look what happened. Mm -hmm. So when those things started to happen for me, I started to see how people started to act different because now I got another outlet to have conversations with people. Mm -hmm. The conversations ain't the same. I don't want to sit around and talk about what's going on in the hood every day. I'm trying to figure this out. So for me, it's just like, that's when I started to like feel like, damn, like I'm coming into my own. So point in case is when I had to make a decision about whether it was me or everybody else, hardest decision I've ever made in my life, bro. Like no cat, like the hardest, like, Hard, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because this is all I knew. Right. The only other decision is when I went cold turkey from the streets, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Before yeah. rap, and it was that hard because that was my safety net, you feel what I'm saying? So for me, it was just like, damn, but it's time to go be a superstar. So I just went in, dived in head first, and, 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 and nigga, I was happy, right? You know what I'm saying? I was like, I was living, I was traveling, I was yeah. doing tours. I'm on tour with Jay Z. And, Right. I'm killing shit out there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Absolute like, it's, like, it's, it's like, you know what I'm saying? So now it's like I'm coming into my, own, and I'm looking like it. <laughs> you right. feel me? Right. Looking like, right. looking like yeah, the wind. I'm looking like it. Right. The skin good, like eyes good. Niggas start wearing jerseys. Yeah, the jerseys going in like this. Like, yeah, working out doing push ups off. behind the yeah. stage. Uh -huh. All that going like, on. Like, I heard about him. This episode of Me and Alex River Game is brought to you by Proper Wow. Proper Wow is a clean, all-day energy shot designed to boost your energy, focus, and productivity without the jitters or the crash. Because, you know, sometimes you're like, people be like this. And, no, no, no. Proper Wow don't do that. You're not going to be, eh, you're not, and then, you're not doing that with Proper Wow. No preservative, no mm -hmm. artificial sweeteners, no BS. Just a natural tasting shot with clean ingredients that work. I'm telling you, these ingredients are clean. Proper Wow small 2.5 ounce shot are great to take on the go, saving you lots of time when you need 
long lasting energy. I'm so talking about long lasting energy. You just take that little energy. shot, boop, mm. you right up, yeah. mm-hmm, but it ain't got the all, you, yeah, you ain't, ain't shaking, none of that stuff. you ain't twitching, you ain't, you just got yeah. energy. It's unbelievable That's energy, it. man, because you, That's you know, it. a lot of times people take certain, uh, you know, energy and they just be, mm-hmm. they be just all running around all day. Hey, hey, and then all of a sudden they at work like this. They snoring in anything. So listen, yeah. one thing about proper wild is not going to happen. Once again, proper wild is a small 2.5 ounce shot, and they are great to take on the go. I'm telling you, you take this on the go, you just have it with you, and you just whop, and you back. Right now, go to properwild.com slash barstool and try proper wild for 30% off proper wild. First time I heard about you, my man Tilla was down in Atlanta. Shout out to Tonto, Cito, all yeah, my yeah, niggas New from. Yeah, and New all, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Them the homies. So uh, they all go to the club back in the day. And uh, Titter gets back to Philly and says, nigga, it's this nigga, Young Jeezy Gill. This nigga got this shit on lock. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so he's like, hold on. He played. So icy for mm, me. Mm, mm. So I was like, nah, that shit cool. Like, you know, it's hot. Like, but that didn't give the perfect picture of who right. you really was right, as right. an artist. I was in jail when I first See, came out. It's, I a, it's a difference when he was in the club. Mm. So he actually seen this shit go down. It's a difference from when you be in a club and you now you like, because it got a different effect on you. You look over here, you see eight chicks over here, they going crazy. You look over here, you see the gangsters over here, they singing. He had that effect. When I heard it, I was like, like, it's cool, yeah, it's hot, but like this this shit that, like they was going crazy. Like, but then when I heard the next shit, right, it was was, around, that was around like Trapadon, some shit. I said, Oh yeah, I yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was I understand it, because I un, I, I kind of looked at you like you was the master of. It wasn't what you say; it's how you say, say it. Yeah, for sure. You feel what I'm saying? For sure. Because you you could say some of the simplest shit. Right. I came down the steps. Right. Nigga, <laughs> nigga made a move and that boy got wet. And then it's, yeah. That's it. That's it. It's That's like it. the whole club yeah. saying that shit. It's like, and it's just the way you delivered delivery, that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, this a cold nigga. You know yeah. what I mean? And, the, and you really was a person who really, to me, Niggas really tried to copy your ad libs. Right. That's when you know you a cold right. motherfucker. Niggas tried to copy your ad your libs. Ad-libs. But they had to know how I got them, though. The thing was, I was never a rapper. I signed people at first. That was my thing. I wanted to be cash money. But then when everybody got locked up and jammed up and all the money was gone, I didn't really have a choice. Yeah. So I had to fix. But I used to sit in the studio with them. But half of the ad libs came because I didn't really understood understand how to write songs so what i would do is just get phrases that, that i wanted to say and say them and then it just be this big space and i'm like well, shit let me just say this to answer myself okay right you know what i'm saying <laughs> which was like even when i did them boys with um boys in the hood boys in the hood which one of probably the most phenomenal verses ever yeah. for me yeah, yeah yeah matter of fact that was one of the the first ones around that time to right. come out too like around that era I was like, oh, yeah, he, right. f- yeah. And that was the first time you can really, like, people who, what you say in that cold talk, it was like, I was saying things on the radio that the radio, you know, people didn't know no, what you so were saying. No, so they won't censor you. Right. So they was just letting you go. Because if right. you on the yeah. radio talking about if it's taking too long right. to lock up, bring it back, right. yeah. the street's going crazy. Right. <laughs> you know what right. I'm saying? But the radio don't know what it means, so they Absolutely. can't take it off. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was that cold. But um, the answer to what you were saying was, even when I did them boys, you know, I went into a room with, you know, a room full of artists like Jody, Key Duke, yeah. you know, like rappers. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they in They went in on that shit too. Right. Man, it took me like three hours to put that verse together. You know what I'm saying? But I knew what I was doing, so at the end of the day, like, that's how I record then. And uh, I remember uh, Trick Daddy and Jazzy Faye was, everybody was in the studio. It was kind of like, you want him to be a part of the group? 
Like it was like whack. Right, you know what right, 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 right. right. <laughs> and I remember pinning my verse up. I didn't have my engineer, so I used their engineer. He didn't know how to record me, so I had to figure that out. And I remember everybody kept walking out of the room, and I'm, you know, I'm hearing the whispers like, man, you know, this should take you forever. Right, you sure you know him. Mm -hmm. and when I dropped that verse, <laughs> and went outside, you know, because I like to listen to my vocals outside, like the door, whatever the control room. Mm -hmm. That's just if it's taking too long to lock mm -hmm. up, bring it back. back. Everybody in the studio was running there. Everybody standing in the room. Like, they was like in awe. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and I knew it. I said, yeah. I got these niggas. I got these niggas. I can do this. I got this. these niggas I could, now. I could do that. That was your confidence booster. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because they was rappers. Yeah. Yeah, they was rappers. Yeah, and that was the first time you was in there with some rappers. rappers yeah. You was in there with yeah. some trappers before right. that was yeah, trying to be rap, rappers. Right, right. Yeah. 1,000%. This episode of Me and I Was Worth a Game is brought to you by Owens, Owens Mixers. Mixers. Owens Craft Mixers gives anybody the ability to make high-quality cocktails right at home. Owens is perfect for anyone who enjoys bar-style cocktails but don't have a clue about how to make them from scratch. Now, all you got to do is just add Owens. You literally pour your favorite liquor over ice, just add Owens, Owens. and you're good to go. It's that easy. Owen mixers paired perfectly to create the best margarita, Maritas, transfusions, cranberry, cranberry blasts, blast, and more. more. And keep an eye out for their brand new nitro-infused Owens Espresso's Martini Mix. Yes. Go to owensmixers.com and check your store located to find that where you can buy Owens near you. If you don't feel like going, getting off the couch, all you got to do is order it on Amazon or get it delivered in less than 30 minutes on GoPuff. Owens Mixers. Is official, so get the Owens mixers to make your cocktails right. Welcome to another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game Business Spotlight, where we give you the news you can use, and we get you out of that couch. Today, we got my man, Haitian CEO, Herm. Listen, yes. I'm talking about, listen, he's going to give you the game on how to get that business credit. A lot of people be talking about something, I need this, I need that. Listen, he get with me, man. He got me hundreds of thousands of business credit. I didn't even use it yet. I, I, I don't know why. First, I don't of, all, even first use of all, let me got just say this. a bunch of Amaxes. I mean, what? he. He took our shit to a different level. Let's get it. To another level. You know what I mean? First of all, I heard me personally, I want to thank you because you came around and you said, man, y'all got all this traffic. Y'all doing all. Do you know yeah. what you can do? Yo. And we was like. Know what you can leverage? We was like, what? And you was like, I could take y'all and get y'all X amount of means and credit that, that, right yep. now. And I was like, nigga, you lying. And we had to do this because a lot of people seen us. Like, I ain't lying. They that seen that you did that shit so fast. It was like this. I couldn't believe it. I appreciate that. I'm talking about. Hold on, just just so y'all niggas don't think I'm bluffing. I always keep so showing you. Know what I mean? Just so y'all don't think you I'm gotta, bluffing. You gotta show the receipts. You know what I mean? I, I don't want y'all. I don't hey. want y'all to think I'm bluffing. Hey. You know what I mean? There's, there's a bunch of motherfuckers in here too, but. I don't want y'all to of think shit. I'm Three bluffing. Right. I'm there not, we go. I'm not playing with these Platinums, shit. the you goals. And he did that for us. You he feel did what that. I'm saying? So I just want to thank you, man. Because if you out here and you got a business and your shit ain't break dancing, man, he can, shit, he can make your shit pop, lock, and drop like Chris Brown. You feel what I'm saying? Get you them credit cards. He can get you. Can he make your shit credit. moonwalk like Michael? Man, he make your shit moonwalk. I'm talking about all that shit. Dancing. Yeah, his shit make your shit float. Dancing. You ever seen a nigga dance in the air and float? That's what he'd make your motherfucking LLC do. You niggas sitting around with LLCs and you acting like dust. LL fleas. Mm. You hear me? You ain't doing nothing with it. I'm trying to tell you. You give him that fucking number, man. Listen, let me tell you something right now. He's gonna give you a video, right? Gonna give you ten different business credit cards, no PG. You're gonna you right now. You can use these. Get ten business credit cards, no PG. What you need to do is text MWG. To one eight four four nine four nine three one fifteen one eight four four nine four nine three one one five. Yes. Once again, one eight four four nine four nine three one one five. Listen, see it on the text screen. million dollars worth of game. Listen, man. Y'all see it MWG. on the Just text MWG. But right now, what you need to do is understand he's going to give you a free. A free ebook, and you're going to get this video on how to get you 10 business credit cards, no PG. No personal guarantee. And listen, listen. Yeah. And we're going to line you up for the course that's coming down the road. We got a lot of stuff coming. But, Herm, so my name Johnny Donut. Darn, Johnny Donut. Talk to me, Mr. Donut. I got, you know, you got two. You got Johnny Donut, and you got Johnny Do Dirty. Uh huh. Johnny Donut have a nice per personal credit score. Right. Personal. Right. Yeah. I got an LLC. I had it for two years. I've been playing games with playing it. Playing games. Got a 700 credit score. Okay. And what can I do? What can you do? So if you got good credit, we're going to put you in position to get twenty five, fifty, dollars $100,000. 
So the better your personal credit, we can get you that money on the business side. Because what the banks are going to do, they might listen. You was good with your personal credit. You was good with your own file. Great. Now I'm going to trust you to do well with your own business credit. So now we want to move everything out of your personal name. Get everything out your personal name. Get everything out your kid's name. Get everything out your mama name. Get it in your business name. You got that piece of paper. You got that document. You want to move that money to that side because it's not showing up on your personal credit report. Because you know when you put stuff on your personal credit report, you go get that flat screen TV. You go get that iPad. Now it messes up your credit usage and your score drops. But what if you put that in your business name and it doesn't show up on your personal credit report? Now you're golden. Mm -hmm. But now... I want to talk to you yes. because you got bad credit. Herm, I'm not in position. How can I get that too? Holy fuck, you mean I got bad credit? No, you're talking Listen. about you, Johnny Dooner. Oh, you're talking yeah. about Johnny, Johnny Dooner. Dooner. He got good credit, oh, but since you got excellent. Right, but since you got bad credit, Herm, what can I do? How can I be put in position? Well, let me help you put you in position. You text that number. We're going to give you a video that's going to show you how to get 10 no personal guarantee business credit cards to put you in position so you get some type of capital so you can be able to make some moves, start your business, get your hot side hustle, your T-shirt brand, your boutique, anything. We're going to get you, put you in position to oh, make so it happen. So you're saying, okay, so you're saying, I'm Johnny Do Dirty, bro. Yeah, I'm yeah, Johnny yeah. Do Dirty. I'm a, fuck that. I ain't even like that fucking name, Johnny Do Dirty. You do Dirty. Fucking yeah. fuck is you talking about. Right, where the fuck you even get that from? Do dirty. I knew, I knew so, a dude named Do Dirty for me. So yeah. all right, I'm home. Right, all right. I got an LLC. Got the LLC. Uh, but my credit score like five forty. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. But my shit fucked up. Yeah, I couldn't help you before, but now I can help you. Now I can get you a couple dollars. Now I can get you some type of capital to put some gasoline on your dreams, on your imagination. Put that gasoline on that. You need some studio time. You need to start your T-shirt brand. You need to start whatever. I need to get into real estate. I need a little something, Herm, but my credit is trash. And I'm going to be able to help you put you in position so you get 10. I'm going to give you 10 of them. Not one, not two, not three. I'm giving you 10 no personal guarantee business credit cards to put you in position. You hear that? To all you fucking credit gladiators out there who have been warring with your motherfucking credit for the last four years yeah. trying to get your shit right, you ain't got to have your shit right. For him to get your shit right. I get you right. something. I'm just saying. I want to get, get y'all something. in the room. Yeah. yeah. Right now, you niggas busted and disgusted. Popped up like a stolen car. Ain't getting nothing. Didn't even know you could get something. Mm -hmm. Well, there's something right here waiting on you, nigga. What you going to do? Give him that fucking number again. Listen, right now, you need to text MWG to 1-844-949-3115. 1 one five. So you saying if I'm just a loser and I'm sitting at home right now <laughs> with fucking bad credit, I could open up an LLC. Yeah, and you can help a nigga. Yeah, I can help you out. Oh, man. How I'm much age you. I gotta have on an LLC? Just say something, man. I'm tired Bro. of giving you niggas this game and you niggas still being so fucking listen, losers. For these credit cards we talking about, only got to be three months old. That's it. Your LLC three months old. You got a business checking account. You watch that video. I'm gonna send you free training. Ten yeah, business credit Texas cards that's number. gonna put you in position. All right, because before I came here, you had good credit. You had a 680 credit score. Mm -hmm. I'm helping you get the Amex. I'm helping you get the Platinum. But a lot of people came to my DMs. They said, like, Herm, I'm not there yet. What can I do? So I got to answer the people's call. Yo, I got something for you. I went out there, did some research, made some connection with some banks, and now I'm giving that back to my people, and you're getting it for free. All right, so let me ask you this question, right? How could it be any niggas out here that's broke, man? When we giving out this type of information, man. Yeah, million dollars worth of information. I'm, I'm confused, man. Yeah. We giving. If you trying to open up a business, you trying to get some money. Mm -hmm. You got bad credit. I could open up an LLC, run some bullshit money through there for three months. Come to you. There you go. And I got ten fucking credit cards. You 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 way ahead of me. There you go. Okay, now let me tell you, niggas, something. When you niggas get these credit cards, don't be the fuck up and Louie. Mm. Uh, you better stick mm. to the plan. Come Remember on. that shit you said mm. you was going to do. Whenever you got a shot, God, if you just give me one shot, I'm gonna open shot, up God. my one store shot. and I'm going to the top. I ain't gonna never look back. Now you get your shot, nigga. You're buying bitches bags that don't deserve it because mm. you're trying to impress a bitch that don't deserve to be impressed. She wasn't there when you were stressed. I'm just saying. This nigga's about to give y'all some fucking real game that's got his attention, motivation, and education, education nigga. You better take advantage. All right, Facts. don't get these 10 credit cards and then be back at square one a year from now. Now, with these 10 credit cards, could you do it all, all online? 
You could do everything online, bro. I can't make it any so easier. You can do for this you. shit all over your phone. All over your phone. Sit all on, your, on couch. your phone. Sit on your couch. And bro, this is per LLC. You got another LLC? Run to play with another LLC. Damn. Yeah, it's time to run it up. I'm giving you wait, the game. On, I'm giving you the blueprint. Come on, come on. Hold on, wait, hold on. Come on, come on. Go ahead. I just got X. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. This shit 100 percent legal, right? Yo, it's 100 percent legal. I'm just saying this shit sounds too. You got four of them, you get four. They credit the damn. You know the you know the receipts I show. You guys got how many how many business credit cards between the two? Y'all oh, no. five, right? Yes, so absolutely. that's per LLC. You run in this game per LLC. No, you know, because there's some motherfuckers out there. Because let me just tell you something. Yeah. When you don't know the game, mm, everything's a scam. That you, the white yeah. folks know. Ooh. And you black and you teaching it? Yeah. You, you, it can't be real. Niggas it don't can't believe be real. It. Black it people be real. don't trust black yeah, so people. It's, it's, so times. it's a nigga somewhere right now, he ain't got nothing but a gun mm -hmm. to his name. A gun and a fucking flat screen. He ain't got cable or nothing. He just got Wi-Fi and YouTube. And he's watching this. And he actually got an LLC. He like, look at this nigga lying. Talk about he can get me 10 credit cards. Yeah. Success has receipts. Man. Shit don't even sound believable. Uh, success has receipts. So... I just want to let them know that you know there's a lot of information out here that you just don't know that if you knew better, you'd do better. Do better, huh? That's all I'm trying to tell you. And I got to give you guys the receipts so when I show you the receipts, you could double back be like, yo, this guy knows what he's talking about. So what else you're going to get? Everybody who texts that number, I'm going to put you on a waiting list because I'm coming out with an application. It's this web app that's going to take you step by step. To get no personal guarantee, business credit cards, business loans, mm. cars in your business name, mm. Wallow one two six. I mm -hmm. see you got a couple things outside mm -hmm. in your business name. Mm -hmm. We're gonna teach you how to get cars in your business name, credit cards in your business name, even beyond the ten free ones that I'm giving you access to. You text that number. I'm gonna put you on the waiting list in November. When that app drops, you guys are gonna be the first ones to get it. My million dollar worth of game crew. Y'all mm. gonna get it first. Give them that fucking number, man. Listen right now. I need y'all to text M W G. To 1 949 3115. 1 949 3115. See the number on that screen. Make sure y'all text that motherfucker now. If you got an LLC, if you don't, you better be getting one. And then write I'm that about. number down right now. And then th three months from now, if the LLC go through, you run a couple months, text it. Text that motherfucker number, but, man. But, but what I'm saying is do something with it. Yeah, go yes. out there and really I'm talking about yeah. you trying to start a t-shirt brand you're trying to get into the hair business trying to start a restaurant go ahead get your rent together pay a pay barbershop I mean because one thing about this game is a lot of people utilize OPM other people's money other people's money man uh, and that's how a lot of people get on they go ahead leverage use that money run it back pay pay it off yeah and then now you you got up off of just having credit just that you know you know what's crazy there's a lot of people that don't even try this right they got LLCs. They just send home and they think they out of they the game. They're not doing nothing with them, bro. And all they got to do is go on their phone, watch this video that Herm is going to send you. Mm. He's going to send you this video. Once you text MWG to 1-844-949-3115. 1-844-949-3115. Listen, yeah. I'm going to give you the game. The hustle is sold separately. Mm. I'm going to give you the blueprint. All you have to do is execute. Y'all see the t-shirt I'm, wear I'm wearing? Or it's your circle. I don't know who mm. you got in your circle. Yeah, who mm. you messing with? I don't know who you messing with, mm. but be that light in your circle to put all your friends on, all your people on to the million dollars worth of game. I got you. We're going to put everybody in position. You text that number. I'm going to send Yo, you- How long do it take for the uh, these 10 uh, credit cards? Like, How long like the process to say if I'm doing right now? And Bro, you get approved right there. They let you know right there whether you got approved or not. Mm. If your stuff is set up properly, your, your, your LLC is set up properly, and I'm going to show you in that video on how to set up your LLC property. If it's set up property, properly, you're going to get it. You're going to get approved. We're going to put you in position. And there's 10 of them. Say, for instance, you just got two. Now you up ten, twenty thousand mm, mm, mm. $20,000, all from watching a video on YouTube. So oh we're going to put you God. guys in position to win, audit your circle, mm. be the light in your circle, cancel all the people that are telling you this is a scam, this is not going to work. You saw them bust out the receipts even before I started speaking. Make this happen. Oh no, you you upgraded our shit. Yeah. One of the main reasons you hear because everybody being a DM, yo man, what's up with the boy Herm? And I don't be having time to explain anything to stuff. Right, right, it's right, like, right. I gotta break all this stuff down. It's like, you know, you be one that had time, but a lot of people are like, yo, what's up with every time we post the videos and they see it, I'll be like, yo, man. And I know this when I post it to you, your motherfucker follows what through the roof. Crazy, crazy. Cause everybody want the knowledge. They want the game, Absolutely. bro. Absolutely. So they be in the DMs, we teach and we learn. I can't answer every single DM. So I was like, listen. 
Let me do the training video. So the training video is out. The course on how to get no personal guarantee funding. We're going to put y'all on the list. So when it drops, you guys are going to get it first. So we're going to hold your hand to walk you through how to get no personal guarantee funding for any LLC you got. The loans, the credit card, how the cars. cars in your name. Cars in your name. Listen, it's it's over right now. We're going to move how they've been moving for the first 400 years. We got the game now. All we got to do is execute. Mm. And how many people have you helped? Uh, how much oh, total man. funding do you think Listen, you got in together? 2021. Total. Total, my company, Bella Sloan Enterprises, shout out to my daughter, we funded $50 million That's in funding, in business funding alone. We're not even talking about the personal side. On the business side alone, $50 million. This year, we want to do 125. We got 90 days in the year left. We're going to hit that goal. Why don't y'all do, do 126? Ah, I like that. <laughs> one, two, six. I got that. Give me right number one more right time. Right now, man. to get this game right now, you need to text MWG to 1 844 949 3115. Fifteen, like stop playing games, man. Yes, get this game. I'm telling you, he's going to give you listen the information. He's going to send you a video so you get the information on how to access ten different business credit cards. No PG. He's going to give you his free ebook, and he's also going to line you up for the courses ready to drop. You're going to be up in there. You don't want to miss this information. Nah, no. I'm telling you, you don't nah, want to miss it. Nah. Because I know this is going to benefit a lot of people. There's a lot of y'all that's out there that got the LLCs and they just sitting there. You got them. I'm telling you, LLC don't cause nothing. That, that LLC, that tax identification number, that EIN number is just like, you know, it takes like this to like get this. It. And you get it immediately. And, and you know what's crazy? Everybody got an idea. A lot of people got an idea. I know everybody's business is not for everybody, but there's a lot of people out there with some great ideas. And it's like, man. When you going to bust a move? You going to bust a move. Like bust it now. Yeah. yeah, man. We in the fourth quarter right now. January 1st is around the corner. Yes, it is. Don't wait for January 1st. Start planting seeds right now. So when January 1st hit, you hitting the ground running, executing. I gave you the play. Just run it. <laughs> and this is another business spotlight. It's another episode of Million Dollars Proof of Game Business Spotlight. This is the business credit edition. Stop playing. This is stop Patience playing games. CEO. Stop playing games with your LLC edition. Right. Why don't you stop playing games with LLC? Right now, once again, before I leave, I want to tell y'all this. Y'all need to right now text this number, MWG 1-844-949-3115. 1-844-949-3115. Stop playing games, man. Million Dollars River Game, Business Spotlight, Haitian CEO, Gilly the Nut, and it's just like that. Right. The movie that took place during the beginning of your career, it was one of the greatest movies in the history of the ghetto. Right. The movie, the the boys, you know, BMF just right. doing their thing. Right. I don't think we ever seen a movie like that up close. Right. Did you did could you ever fathom that that movie, uh, how it went down from the the machinery, from the whips to the jury, the especially the club. No, 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 fuck. Especially, no, 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 no. You got the wrong especially. The women, nigga. the women, the women. But listen, listen. Fuck it. Shit. Listen, but listen. All that. Did you? Did you even? Man, that that shit will be emulated for decades. It's still trying to become. It's still trying right. to. People still trying to emulate right. that movie right. that was in people's minds through video, and some people seen that shit up close. Right. Did you think that it would have such a big pack on, big impact on culture? I think that. When you're in it, you don't see things in real time. You know what I mean? I just know what I, things I saw that I felt like, okay, this is different. Meaning like, you know, when we used to hang out, you know, how it is now where you see people taking pictures, you know, that was a red flag for somebody like myself. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what, what the saying? fuck is going like, on? You know what I'm saying? So it, it was things like that or 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 – like when you're in the club and you can tap Gilly and be like, yo, I just spent my last 100000 Let me get two hundred. dollars Somebody go in their bag and get 200000 Don't blink eye. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, or, or you ain't got your car today. You can drive somebody else's. Right. Whip. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, it's it just. Not no regular whip. Right. Lambo. So, Lambo Ferrari. or whatever. But, and I think it was such a magic time for like Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you had the people that can get you those type of cars. One phone call. You know what I'm saying? The jewelers were a little different. They'd pull up to the club and bring you the right. joint. The club promoters would come to the house and get the money before you get there. Mm -hmm. Make sure you got the bottles. And I just think, you know, and I never 
you know, take nothing away from the city. But I think what dude and them was doing was bringing a Detroit lifestyle yeah, to, to Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I just think that when you see somebody do something different and it works, you're captivated. And 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 one thing that I can credit to that is I remember going to the club and um being in there and we used to drink Quavo 1800 and uh Chris Style. Yeah. And Alex, which is the promoter. AG, AG. shout out to AG. AG said, I got bad news. I don't have any 1800 or Chris Style, but I do have uh, Patron and Perrier Juliet. And we started drinking that. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if you really notice holding the bottles, and if you look at the coach and now everybody holds the bottles, and you're sitting there, you're going, damn. And I watch it go from that to Lil John rap about Patron. To Patron being the next biggest thing in the world, that's all everybody drunk. Yeah. Or seeing the Chris style go from that to PJ, I'm like, damn. Or going to the club and it was like your mission to, um, you know, fuck up money. You know what I'm saying? The strip club, yeah. I'm fucking his money up. Nobody but that was. I'm gonna keep it all real. Nobody did it like them niggas. Right. But that in was the history. Thing. But 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 this is the thing. Like, so even for me, because I used to even tell dude, I'd be like, yeah, you know, because I would get my own bag, but I like. What I'm gonna do is, <laughs> I'm gonna wear this chain that says Jeezy, this jersey with Jeezy in the back, and I'm gonna do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Cause everybody get money. I'm gonna be in the midst though, right? But also, I'm gonna make sure they playing my music. Right? Yeah, you know okay. what I'm saying? Cause this is this is marketing to me. And if you're real, and if you're a real hustler, <laughs> right. I'm only throwing two thousand. No, no, but you had to, you had you had to throw it though. He had to throw it. Yeah. Oh damn, you had oh, to no, fuck it up. Oh no, because because the the, the, the what's the, the most you threw? Way, what's the most you threw? Probably the most I probably threw. Probably on my own, probably like three hundred thousand. Oh no, and that's, See, and that's probably this. like nigga. That's probably like a in a week. Oh, in a week. But, but, it, but it's been more collectively. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not bragging, but I'm saying. But you that was marketing. That was marketing, marketing dollars for me. But I, I knew they keep that, seeing you with that jersey on, bro. The snowman. All, all it was, and shout out to DJ Nando. Uh, God bless that DJ Nando, which ended up being one of my good friends. When I when I used to walk in the club, he's like, "Jesus, what you need? Fifty thousand, hundred thousand." And at first, I thought he was, like, putting pressure on me. Yeah. But I didn't understand he was getting the girls to understand who I was. Okay. You know okay, he was with you. Right, he was with me. And the first place I took Jeff Jam before I got my deal, I flew the whole Def Jam into Atlanta. Where am I going to take them to show them that I'm really Strip club. This? Magic City. I know every girl in there. I know all the DJ. I know the doorman. I'm having it my way. Then the homies in there, too. You know what I'm saying? Damn. And Dude, as soon as you fact, come so, in, right. Jeezy, what you want? Right, right. 189,000. Get Jeezy. But, but I will say. Def Jam like this. Sign this nigga. Right. Yeah. This nigga I, I, I was giving some of the execs money. Uh, shout out to Shauna Ayers, which was my product manager. I watched her put it in her bag. I was like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She said, I'm putting it right. up. <laughs> but, He's um, tripping. Um, what it was for me is just like, you know, I just think that I had, again, a vision. You know what I'm saying? And I was able to understand that I'm going to spend this money. Like my man used to say, I was like, yo, why, why are you spending so much money? He said, we helping single mothers. That was his thing. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, my thing was. He was a cold motherfucker. Right. <laughs> my yeah. thing, he was a tricking motherfucker. Right. Yeah, we helping single mothers. Right. Yeah. And my thing was always marketing. I never lost the eye on the ball of that. But then also, there's no other place in the world you can be cooler than a strip club. That's the staple strip club in a major black city that is the mecca of culture. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. that's a fixture in the community. Yeah. Meaning that, and which is why, you know, you, any if any time somebody comes to Atlanta, they got to go there. But my point in case is, this is like, you ain't got to be big nowhere in the world as long as you big there. Mm -hmm. Because every hustler in the world coming there. Coming there. Mm -hmm. And it's just like it's like. And if your shit is on rotation there, they going back to where. They and they come into that city, yeah. and they see you that shit right. raining. You they from going here. back to wherever they from, and they like, yo, I was in there. And by the way, people were reciting every word, like trap or die, mm. drop, and every they played the whole mixtape in the, the club, and nigga, with the drops and all. In Same thing club. when I came to Philly, though, nigga. Yeah. Same thing when I came in to Philly, though. The, I'm talking about this was the first time in the history yeah. of DJing, right? With a motherfucking DJ. Yep. Push fucking play, right. and then he was in the motherfucking crowd with the niggas. He right. he let the whole shit right. play out, right. and then fifty five minutes when it's over. Well, and bro, I pressed up. I pressed up 
I know at least 600,000 copies myself of Trap or Die. He's, he, Ron saw me. He was riding around passing them things out everywhere I can get somebody to take one. I used to go to this club on the east side called Primetime every Sunday. They used to have like 3,000 people there. And I used to pass out CDs every Sunday. And that's why I got my first show booked there. Just based off me, just it went with two hundred dollars. That was the <laughs> happiest yeah. right. two hundred. Right. Right. Them it was like the first one like legitimate <laughs> for my yeah. work. I'm like, you know, it's like you being an artist and painting somebody, and somebody like, well, shit, I give you, you know, hundred dollars for that. You're like, shit, let's do it. Yeah. But that's when I knew I was on to something. But I do want to shout out the girls at Magic City in that time because one thing it was when you came in, there, all the girls were superstars. They all you you knew them all by their name, who they was. You know who they deal with, and they kept you on point with everything that was going on in the city. Who robbed, who jacked, who talked to, who the police, who the snitches. Who don't. That was what they did, and we just took care of them in that way. But they was also the ones that had um, the influence to influence the real cats from other cities to like mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, because they like you ain't got you that like Jesus. Jesus, right? So a nigga feel like he behind. Who right? The fuck is Jesus? Right, right. That's right. the plan now. He don't like the snowman. Right. The nigga like oh. Right. No, I fuck with the snowman. Right. He like, oh, the snowman. <laughs> right. Nigga lie like a Yeah. <laughs> but that's but that's how it happened. And it and it gradually just happened like that and it just started spreading and it was just like before you knew it, and and, and again it was a magical time in Atlanta. It was like you came outside Mad City, it was like a car show. Every yeah. car you can think of. And, like, just, and they won. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like Don't leave that out. Say so what now? It was a car show when you niggas won. Yeah, for sure. It was a car show <laughs> and at the same time. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot of money um, floating through the city in a way that made it just magical. And it was just like everybody was winning. You know what I'm saying? And it was like the music was the soundtrack to the win. everybody winning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Trap or Die was like, yeah, you, you know what I mean? I went from old school Chevy. That, that's what was going right. on. That nigga said it was just... Money floating around the city. Yeah, you niggas was throwing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but all also, the strippers had Bentley. Oh, yeah, no, they was living. They was they, living. You, you said they were superstars. All of them had Bentley. Yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. was the only place right. where strippers right. was pulling up in the right. same cars yep, the as the got, rappers yep. and the hustlers. Yep. They was getting that in money. In Philly, the, yeah. the bitches got beat up Hondas. Yeah, no, that was, that was pussy. Head, they, they was jumping out their shit. Yeah. You hear me? And I'm like, it was so crazy back then. Like, Porsches and shit didn't even get parked in front of the club. Like, somebody in front of Magic? No, 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 no. Nigga, no, you, no, no. you, you I wish they Rar- would. You gotta be in the Rari. I, I wish that shit, they would put a Porsche yeah, in front of that yeah, motherfucker. They'd yeah, kick a nigga in his ass yeah, that, yeah. that parked that joint, man. Yeah. Like, that shit was unbelievable. It was real, bro. You know what yeah. I mean? And I'm not going, I'm not going to even like hold you like, because even when I came in, you know what I'm saying, it was like all about like snap music, yeah. punk music. Yeah. So it was hard to compete with that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like scrapping them had it on lock. Knuck if you buck. Knuck if you my buck. Tempo was, up. It was, my tempo was so slow yeah. that it took real hustlers with credibility and influence to let people know this is what it's supposed to sound like. You feel what I'm saying? Right. Because, I, you know, my music, like you had Laffy Taffy and, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It like, and, and it was like that's what had the club on smash. Yeah, and it's like I'm coming in here. You got records like you know Trap or Die, Air Force. They're so slow, but when you start to see people rejoice and and and, and like celebrate to it, I'm like, damn. And then what happened is, you know what I'm saying? I started going on the road and getting shows, and then I would show up in these cities, and it's like even like Philly. It's packed yeah. wall to wall. Oh, you remember the show I bought you to Philly, the club, right. to the club? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I broke some bread right. with you. How much you want, nigga? Get that nigga yeah. And, and yeah. It was like, it's wall to wall. But it all started right there in the walls of Magic, bro. I can't even, I can't even cap. That's where it started at. Magic City. So shout out to Magic yeah, City. Shout out to Magic City, yeah. Gave birth to Jeezy. Yeah. Now, you've been, you been with Def Jam since the beginning. Yeah, Kobe Bryant, baby. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. What what, what 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 is it that kept you there? What was the business relationship like? Because well, a lot of artists, right? Um, and and I and I, and I really want to know this for the artists out there that might be with a label, which is it might be the partners and have a, right. and can take that partnership and have longevity with it. What right. is the keys to that? And what right. was it about Def Jam that you well, know? What was it about Def Jam? In the beginning, if I'm honest, 
had a lot to do with Shakir Stewart. Shakir, rest in peace, Shakir Stewart. Yeah, man, like Shakir was my confidant. He was the one person I could tell how I was feeling. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. everybody else, he was Superman. Right. I'd be like, you don't go through shit. You cool. You got it. <laughs> nigga, you got money. You ain't going through nothing. I'm like, nigga, we about to do this too. I'm nervous as shit. What about, you know what I mean? What are we doing? You know what I mean? But Shakir was my friend, my confidant. And um, by him being in the building, I just felt like I had a different, he had a different type of alliance with me because he knew me from the street. Yeah. And he, he was one of the reasons why I got signed. I think the L.A. Reed play a bit such a big part because he understood what South Music was about. Yeah. And he was like, you know, he, he was just so, he, he just understood how to make superstars. And he, and he was cutting that check, by the way. I'm just, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, when Kevin Lyles, who originally signed me, yeah, left two weeks after signing me and went to Atlantic, and lo and behold, Jay Z became the president. Yeah. So now I got this trifecta of people that I got relationships with, with. that are helping me, you know, through all these different things. Like that's why I was able to do the um, Boys in the Hood deal with, with Puff and Bad Boy and mm-hmm. still have my Def Jam right. deal yeah. because now I'm with Jay and Puff and we having conversations. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. like, yo, I want to do this. He's like, yeah, whatever. Uh, L.A. Reid was with it too. So to answer your question, I think. My loyalty um, was to, you know, I'm one of those type of people. I'm a lawyer by default. Like, if, if I'm about my business, but I'm just saying, like, if it ain't broke, I'll fix it. That's a hell of a combination. Right. At that time, L.A. Reid was the chairman, right? Correct. And Jay-Z was the president. Correct. And Kev, Kevin Lyles just left, but you had dealings with him. Right. That's an unbelievable roller deck. Right, right. And those were the people, and, and me, and Steph, me and Kevin still talk to this yeah, day. Yeah, sure. But... I got so much game and understood the building so mm-hmm. much, and even the people that worked in there, I built like a real relationship with them. Because even when they was Kaiser like, still over there? No, Kaiser wasn't. At, he was at Atlantic. He left by now. Yeah. So you know, you got Pekas, you got Shana, yeah. you yeah. got, you know, it just it was just a legendary time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it was just like L.A. Reid would call me and put me on records with Rihanna. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just come in, man. You know what I'm saying? I was doing records with Ye and this one, that one, mm-hmm. and it was just like, damn. You know what I'm saying? So, relationships. Relationships, but. Again, you know, rest in peace to the GOAT, Kobe. I kind of had that Kobe, L.A. Lakers, like I'm a fixture in this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And which way was why I was able to negotiate to be an executive up there. So a lot of people don't know I'm executive at Def Jam right now. We just signed Haiti Baby uh, from SoCal. He's dope. We just signed him to our label, CT, um, New World, and Def Jam. But it's just like I understand the building. And again, it's like having mm-hmm. a plug that never robbed you. Right. You know Why you leaving? Right, yeah. right. Yeah, they never robbed me. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I got a plug. You know what I'm saying? They always keep the work. They, 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 they call, never they ran out of work. <laughs> right. So it's just like, you know, if I look like shopping with somebody else, you know, you might get hit. You might shout get out robbed. to my brother Tunji over there, yeah, too. Yeah, man. shout out Cheer to Tunji. Yeah, yeah. And that's another thing. Yeah. I've been through almost seven different regimes of Def Jam. Yeah. And I stuck in there even when it was, it was shaky. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Only it, fucking area you ain't been through was the run DMC. Right, point. right. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and Russell Simmons. Right. And Leo and all them. Yeah. No, he was there when Leo was there. No, Leo was trying to sign me to Atlantic. Oh, yeah. he was trying to sign he me to Atlantic. He said the illest shit to me, though. I was just like, when he came, I, I flew in to see him. He was like, yeah, I really want to see you win. You know how he talked. Yeah. The old mobster. He said, I will, anybody to get in our way, I will smash them like an ant. He said, I smash him like an ant with a sludge hammer for you. I said, yo, this nigga's cold, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Get, he was trying. It was L.A. Reed with the Savoir Fair that kind of, you know, he yeah. was smoking this good cigars, drinking the Louis 13. He go in his office. It's like, I'm in L.A. office. This shit is cracking. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And you like L.A. Atlanta, TLC. Yeah, he had the whole outcast. Yeah. He had the whole Tony Rich. He had an unbelievable mm. staff. You yeah. from down here, it was easier yeah. to believe and, in and, that. But the, 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 the glue to it all was the fact that Shakir was in there. Yeah. Yeah. Because I trust him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shakir is, you know, he, he, you know, we've been through a lot of things together, but I, I did, tr- like, because, you know, a lot of these people will tell you anything to get things done. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because they got your ear. But I trusted him. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I, if he says something, you know, I'm going to think about it because back then I was definitely paranoid mm-hmm. and second guessing anything anybody came to me with um, because I didn't trust industry people at the time, but I trusted him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's major, man. Now, now, Snowfall. Mm-hmm. 
You know, the yeah. album come out tomorrow. Who yeah. do you got on there? It's out tomorrow. So I really wanted to link with the guy. Well, first of all, all shout out to all the producers that rock with me, been rock with me, Justice League, uh, D Rich, the list goes on yeah. and on and on. Um, shout out to DJ Drama, Don Cannon, I think yeah. uh Cool and Dre, all those guys on there too. Um as far as features, I just really wanted to rock with the young guys, mm-hmm. not even young, like the homies that I felt like I respect what they yeah. stand for. Right. I want to build some type of um, alliance with. Right. So you got ESTG. Mm-hmm. What you know I was saying? Dope. We got a record called Scarface that's nuts. Mm. Mm. Um, you got a uh, shout out to my boy. He should be out right now. 42 Doug. Mm-hmm. 42. We got a record called Put the Minks Down that's going to tear Detroit and, 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 and the Midwest up. Mm-hmm. And then shout out to... Uh, Lil Dirk, man, that's my brother, man. We got a record called Most Hated. That's his guy. Yeah, we got a record called Most Hated. Yeah, and and, and I, I'm, I'm gonna say this too, man. The reason Smirk. why the reason why I love Dirk, man, is Dirk real is, nigga. He's 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 truly someone who understands his position because the way Dirk nature's nurtures his relationships, but also if you sit down and have a conversation with Dirk, oh yeah. He's like a sponge. Yes, he's so game up. You, you know, he, he's so good. And then you'll watch him and he'll go do exactly what yeah. we talked about him being independent. Yeah. My rooftop, we had a whole conversation. Mm-hmm. And I sat there and watched him do everything we had a conversation about. It's all it take is sometimes for somebody to put it in your mind yeah, that you could really man. do the shit. But at the same time, I watched him you know, be at a place where he was trying to figure it out to everything that he wanted, he actually got. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I kind of hate to see a lot of the shit he go through but I understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So shout out to Dirk. And and I seen you. Shout out to my Detroit family. I just seen you in Detroit with Payroll, Giovanni, yeah, Baby out, Money and them. Yeah, shout out to Payroll. Mm-hmm. I mean, Detroit is like, yeah. I mean, matter of fact, when this come out, we should be having a, um, a B-side concert in Detroit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right now, um, Detroit is just different, bro. And, and, and I'm never going to downplay, you know, the connection that I have with yeah. Detroit because it's yes. like it's re- like Detroit is like home. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's it's it's, it's crazy. Like I, I feel better there than some places where I'm supposed to be. Feeling yeah. Like. Mm-hmm. And I go to Detroit and it's just love. And even shout out to payroll. You know, I just call. Major shout like, out to Giovanni. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by, and by the way, like he's a Dirk, solid individual. Solid. He's solid. He's smart. Solid. He's wise. Right. He you know he 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 soak a lot of game up, man. Right. And he's real mature. No, no, for his age, yes. Yes. But that's the thing about Detroit. Like, I feel like it's something in the water out there because they live by a different creed and culture. Yep, and they about their paper. Of, yeah, but a lot of cities yes. don't have that type of loyalty. No, they don't. You know what I'm saying? Those those morals and values and integrity. Right. You know, just payroll somebody you can leave with your kids. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, right. I'll be back. Make right. sure they good. He, he right. that type of guy. Right. Um, so shout out to payroll. Shout out to the homie Baby Money. Uh, shout out to Peasy. Peasy Money, Peasy. Yeah. T.T., you know, right. all out my to the people out there. My guy, Peasy, yes, Vezzo. 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 Vezzo, shout out to Vezzo, too. Yeah. Me and Vezzo got a record coming, too. Oh, yeah, you're on our plan. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Defiance Field. That's my water. Yeah, that's my water. We got to send you know some cases, man. man. Right, man. Get we got to get right. Him right. Man. Get that that shout out to this Nard, too, man. I got to get you on this Nard. Give me some Defiance Field. Defiance Field. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to, he got this fine cognac. Yeah, so we got cognac, vodka, we got gin. That's what I'm talking about, man. Up, man. And, and, and you just you just want business support. shit. Yeah, for me it's, it's just business like, shit, man. Yeah, for me it's just like again, I, I I finally got a chance to get there, and I'm just trying to lead by example. When you think about you know our our region and where we at, we don't got a lot of puffs and Jay Zs, and that's my mission to be in right. that position. So the generation behind me can be like, yo, this is what you do when you 10, 15 years in the game. Because mm-hmm. one thing about it, ain't no expiration date on getting no money. Mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> you know, Put an expiration date on that right. shit if you want, nigga. You know what I mean? Like, you be like, what you doing, man? You been doing, you know, people be like, why don't you just chill? For what? Right. I'm I'm, I'm, mm. I'm looking 21. Right. I, I told you. I feel you. 22. I told right. you. I just told all the youngins. I said, the, 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 don't you know this is always the motherfuckers with money that tell the broke motherfuckers, money ain't everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shit, well, why the yeah, fuck? You better, want that, you better want that shit bad as you want air. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's right next to air, right next to oxygen. <laughs> right. And I'm, and I'm going to tell you something. I was in the cell when I was in the penitentiary. Uh, you just put the album out. And uh, my cell, he coming in like, yo, you got to check this joint out. New Jeezy shit. Old head on here talking this shit. Just win. Just win. First time I ever heard of Les right. Brown in my life. I'm right. in the penitentiary. Right. Now, I used to be the nigga in the yard going around talking to niggas all the time. Right. Baby, we going to be always. Right. He's always be. When I heard that record, 
And then I went and bought a bunch of Les Brown shit. I said, right. yo, man, right. this shit I be doing, but I be doing it on some right. street shit, the niggas in the yard. That song really made me come home and turn it up with the motivation. Oh, that's what's on up. On the street bro. level. Wow. Because I was like, yeah, Les, he talking to them, but right. hearing that, it was like, I was saying shit that was similar, but more on some street shit, how we got to switch it up. Right. And if you go and look at my body of work since I came home, that's what really started this shit, Just Win. Wow. That song that's, right there. That's crazy. Because it, it was so powerful, I was like, damn, but when my celly came up, I was free my... My man Chip, when, man Chip and Tom. Sully, when you Sully came in the shower. No, I said came in the cell, nigga. Get oh, the fuck out of here. I heard so it. so on and so on, right? <laughs> so on and so on. And it was just like that song was major, man. You niggas talk about Jeezy in the shower. You know, yeah. <laughs> Jeezy. Yo, that uh, motherfucker, bad motherfucker. <laughs> um, no, less, less. I, somebody put, and that's another thing. I was hanging around some people. And, they put and you down with the less. And they put me on the less. And I was just like, and you got to understand, everything that I ever done, you know, that I ever did and I got game from, I immediately put it in the music to give it back to my people. Because I just feel like that's, I'm, I'm a vessel when it comes to that. Because right. I'm not scared to get outside of my comfort zone and go sit down and chop it up with somebody. Yeah. And get some game, you know what I mean? Right. It might not be who you want it to be because you're used to dealing with a certain type of person. Yeah. But I'm but I'm, I'm a chameleon enough to be a G and still going to have a, intelligent, articulated conversation with somebody to get the information they have and the data and the knowledge and be like, yo, that's how I wrote the recession. I just went and talked to people. Like, I was in a room full of people, man, that I know that was, you know, billionaires, you know, multi-millionaires, and to hear them even being concerned about money and talking about a recession, I didn't even know what it was. I went and looked it up. Uh -huh. See what I'm saying? And then I was like, oh, this can really happen. Uh -huh. And that's when I wrote the recession because I was trying to put people on the game. But my point of case is, when I heard Les Brown and the way he was talking about motivation for me, I was like, I never heard like Because I know you probably looked at a bunch of his YouTubes. Yeah, his shit no, is I went, crazy. I went through his whole- His shit design. is crazy. Yeah. And, and he was speaking in rooms of 5,000 people right, back in the day right, in the right, 80s. Right. Mm -hmm. But but the the way he was able to um, articulate. package and articulate yeah. his message, it just hits you different. And even for me, like in some of my lowest times, bro, like some of the times when I'm like out of my mind, I'll sit there, man, throw him Les Brown and- you done. You and back. just put my headphones on, you know, and just sit there for hours. And it's, it's like it's, it's like church for me. It's like mm -hmm. you just get back to you know what it is because you know when you in this this game in this world, like you can just get distracted by so many things, you forget what you're doing and why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And he bring you back and center you. And when I put that win out, that's how I went. Like just win. No matter how big, no matter how no small, matter, just, just, just win, win nigga. Just win. Just, just win. That's all it's about. Yeah. Win, my nigga, just win. Just win. That's what it's about, man. Let me ask you a question, man. You know, when you when you finally got your backbone, your rib, mm -hmm. that that I know that put a lot of growth on you, too. For sure. Yeah. Because a woman, one thing about a woman that got your back, she going to tell you all the shit you don't want to hear. For sure. Yeah. She going to tell you all the things. She going to pat you on your back when you do a great job. She going to tell you the niggas to watch. I don't know that nigga with the <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that nigga right, right, right there, baby. Right. Just keep an eye on him. Right, right. So, you know, a good woman, boy, she'll help you grow, Appreciate too. Appreciate that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you got to, like you say, you got to just build, you got to build your, your tribe. You got to build your, you know, your people, man, because, you know, that's that's what it's, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, nobody just wins the game and it's done and it's all over. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like what you leave behind, what you, what you, you know, you got to look at these guys who build these, you know, these huge companies and all the people's lives they change. And I feel like that, too, with, like, with music. It's just like, you know, we do we do so much culturally and we do so much influence-wise. But, like, what do we leave? Right. You know what I'm saying? When you look at yeah. Big and you like, damn, like, he was so impactful. There's... Right. It's just legacy. It's right. like when you look at Tupac, which was my inspiration. Yeah, Tupac you know, was the guy. Right, he was the guy, which was probably one of the first people that I saw that had morals and values. Right. Like, as was, a rapper, like, yeah. Like, it's easy as a man. Yeah. You know, because that's the thing. Like, I take the rapper out of everything I do. Yeah, like, but I'm saying, right. like, on a... Like on the forefront, you know what I'm saying? Like He's a revolutionary, right? But yeah, on the cool. forefront, you know, we he came off to us. We knew about him because right. of the rapper, right. and then when we knew about him, it was like, oh wait, it's so much more to this nigga because he would just say shit that right. you was like, right? 
I don't even really know, like, if you really supposed to be saying that right, in these type right, of times right, right now. Right, but right. he was one that was going to stand on, on, on whatever. Business. He on was standing business. on business. Absolutely. And, 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 but when you look at these, and, and, you know, no disrespect, but it's just like, you know, I'm just trying to figure out how to change that narrative for us by, by, by leading the best way I know how, because that's what gets me fulfillment. Even when you see me doing a new project like this, it's because you can. But look at what it's opening up for, you know, the ESTGs and the Dirks. And not mm-hmm. that they don't got the, it's just like, right. well, we're going to keep. Because it's almost like getting money with somebody that's younger than right. you. Right, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You, you having the conversations while yeah. you're in the studio. You're talking about, you know, how to play. I told Dirk the other day, was on the phone. He's like, yeah, I was like, well, it was crazy. But I basically said, I ain't worried about, you know, you. I'm worried about anybody else. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you be cool. Yeah. But my point in case is, it's like, in the end, you know, we got to live full, die empty. That's Brown, just so you know. Yes. But we have an obligation, you know what I'm saying, because we didn't put us in this position. Same as you guys. It's just like when I hear you guys chopping it up, you know, I know Gilly. Like, we was yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, and, and when you came home, it's just like when I see what you guys are doing, it's like to me, you guys are fulfilling your obligation. Right. You, you're keeping it solid absolutely with some people that people don't keep it solid with and i right. bet you a lot of these cats call y'all on a personal level absolutely. oh yeah oh yeah basketball oh, yeah. players they, they football trust players you. They're youngest you know yeah. what i'm saying Rappers. they trust you and i feel like that's what it's about and i know you know you got really been getting money you know what i'm saying i know that for a fact absolutely so i know this ain't about that so i feel like you guys are fulfilling your obligation like you guys are doing this because it's real and and, and it means something and you're watching lives change which is the same reason why I continue to do what I do because mm-hmm. at some point somebody's gonna come to me like they always do and ask me, mm-hmm. yo, big homie, like, how do you do the real estate? <coughs> how do you, you right. know, how do you go get you a brain? I mean, yeah. kids them call me about getting liquor brands and water brands and who to partner with. That's my obligation. Tell them. Business. Big business, big snow. Big snow. Like we, this our obligation, but this shit for some chicken, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Get it fucked. This shit for the chicken, the Bread. biscuits. Oh, Bread. shit, man. No, but we really love the youngins, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we really, you know, when we was starting this platform, our whole thing was we was we was going, you know, fuck with the owners of tomorrow. You feel what I'm saying? That's, you know, right. we going to fuck with the motherfuckers that's right now, and we going to put our platform on them and help them try to, you know, take that shit to the next level. And the old niggas that we going to get is going to be legends. Legends. Mm. You feel we'll what see. I'm saying? We'll Shaquille see. O'Neal. Right. He's a small one, though. Deion Sanders. He's small one. Business game, yes. crazy yes. Shaq. Yes. Yes. People don't even know. He's like quiet. Shaq is an animal. Oh, yes. Shaq is He's a, quiet. First of all, he got a zillion businesses. Yeah, first of all, yeah, he don't play. Shaq got more motherfucking commercials. He the fucking general. He he makes so he's, brand money. Johns. he's the Snoop Dogg of basketball. Absolutely. Yeah. That's Snoop it. ain't bullshit. Yeah, Snoop. Snoop is <laughs> not bullshit. Snoop playing. Chorus lights like a mother. <laughs> right. Snoop, Snoop got, I know Snoop got turning everything. that shit down. Yeah. He got to be. It's yeah, too much. It's, it's, I just I just called Snoop and told him, man, we need Send some of the fucking cereal. Snoop loops, man. Yeah. I ain't yeah. need another Snoop box of fruit. He got Snoop loops, loops. He got yeah. Snoop loops, man. Man. Oh, my God. That's, yeah. Yeah, it is. I see you. I'm I'm telling I didn't even know that. One thing about Snoop and Shaq, them niggas are everywhere like broken glass. You hear me? Yeah. Some niggas got their hands and everything. I love For it. real, but I, I, love I, and it. I love it, man. Keep getting I love it. Real talk. I man. love it. We just want to, we appreciate you, man. Yeah, we man. just want to give you your flowers, man. Salute you, man. My guy. Motherfucking legend in the game. Yes, already. And for you to be, you know, can't, you know, came out when you came out and then you dropping shit right now when niggas just talk about your barbecue bacon to young niggas. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> shit, that's major. That's you know major, what I mean? Man. So make sure y'all get that motherfucking that's, album. That's right. Snowfall, tomorrow. baby. Tomorrow. Go album get that. tomorrow. It's coming out, Album baby. tomorrow. And, and obviously he fucking with the owners of Tomorrow Eat too. Already. Already. He got all young niggas on his shit. Already. <laughs> and, and before I leave, man, I just want to give you guys your flowers, man, Appreciate because, that. you know, I, I feel it takes courage to do what y'all doing, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and just to help, you know, cultivate, you know, what, what's going to happen. And, and I even see y'all with Dion and the kids. And yeah. Things, yeah. It's just like, I see this shit is real for y'all, bro. And it's just like, knowing like me and Gilly hang out at strip clubs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my, my, my guy's damn near, he's damn near a damn, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's, like, he's like, he's like, he's like the Dom Lennon of the hood. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Dom like, Lennon, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, 
this is amazing. And even for yourself, bro, yeah. you know. He used to I, run the strip club in the joint. Fuck out of here. You <laughs> this but I, I don't really know. I, I, I listen to some of your stuff on um, like a, 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 a different podcast. Like I yeah. think it was Tom. Uh, Tom, uh, by I, you, yeah, by you. And I, I got a lot of your story, but just to see where you come from, brother, and see that, you know what I'm saying, you stayed down and, and, and you letting these kids know what 20 years is really about, but to come out with the... Um, the energy and, and, and the intention that you have, mm -hmm. that shit is amazing, bro, because at the end of the day, that shit's supposed to break you, but it feel like it yeah. needs you. You know what I mean? So we can continue to do what the fuck you're doing because we all watching. I appreciate that, man. Appreciate that, For sure. Man. Real talk. As much love. Not as nigga. You looking like you ready to cross. Stop looking the like this. Fuck out of here, nigga. Ass, nigga. I ain't crying. You bitch ass nigga. You sitting there looking at Jeezy like the, the fuck out of here. You some bullshit. Snap out that you shit. You some bullshit, man. man. <laughs> nigga get snow all in. He about to cry. Shit, snow shot me because I've seen he you. Lies. He's and he lies. And listen. Him. And he really knew snow was telling the truth because he said I seen you on another podcast. The time. Yeah, the time. That really touched him. When you said that, I seen the his ears like this. He ain't lying to me, man. He telling me the truth, man. <laughs> Looking at that man all in his eyes and shit lying, getting watery nigga. and shit. The fuck out of here, you know that nigga straighten up, He's man. A nut, man. You, you soft, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't man. know what you talking that about. That's what that jail time did to him. Made him soft. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm soft here, as man. a motherfucker, but it is just shit. like that. Right. <laughs>